Okay, so just like our webinar last week, we're going to spend a little bit of time in PowerPoint, not more than 10, 15 minutes, and then I'll pass it over to Scott, and he's going to be doing the live portion of editing and actually having fun with soundtracks today. Um, I did want to note before we get started that this week's webinar is focusing specifically on soundtrack creation and audio formatting, and whatever soundtrack we create today is what we're going to be using in next week's webinar, which is going to be the in-depth scripting webinar. And here in a few minutes, I will have polls running for everyone that's attending to vote on what songs we're going to use in the webinar today as well as the webinar next week. So I recommend that everyone cast their vote. Okay, let me change something real quick. All right. All right, so let's kick it off here. So what are we going to cover in today's webinar? We're going to talk about what music to use, where to get your music. We're going to talk about editing audio. And again, that's going to be the, the most, uh, the largest portion of today's webinar. We're going to talk about formatting and audio box best practices. So first off, what music to use? And this is a popular question I see around a lot online and so forth. And um, the short answer is anything, right? So any type of music can be used in soundtrack creation for fireworks. Obviously, there's some music that might be better. Um, for example, with pop music, very common, obviously, to use pop music. A lot of the courses are very repetitive. So we like to kind of chop those songs down. So that way, instead of using the full four minutes, we might only use two minutes of, of a song, which makes it really good to use. So on that note, I want to kick off the first poll, which is what song we're going to use for the intro of the soundtrack. And these are all pop choices. So I'll let you guys go ahead and vote on that. And the panels remind me to share those results once they are done. And if you, and if you don't know the song, Joel, if you guys do not know the song, Scott has volunteered to sing them for you. So just That's request right. in the chat. Just request it. And I, I know all, every single word of all of these by heart in three okay. languages. Right. So obviously, like I said, any song can be used, but there's definitely things to keep in mind when you are choosing music. And some of those things would include songs that have dynamic changes, right? So highs and lows in the songs, fast and slow tempo, tempo changes. Personally, I really enjoy electronic dance music because of the fact that a lot of times they have a build up and then it gets crazy, really fun songs to use for finales and so forth. Um, something else to keep in mind is you can tell a story with your soundtrack. So tell a story, you know, this can be done using voiceover where you're actually talking either throughout the entire soundtrack or just in certain parts at the beginning and so forth to kind of lead the audience through a progression. Other just music selection can also create a story. What we're gonna be doing today is focusing primarily on an intro, a body, and a finale. So we'll be picking three songs today to kind of tell our story. I'm gonna go ahead and close the poll from the pop song. It looks like Blinding Lights by The Weeknd won this round, which by the way, the earlier webinar, it won as well. I'll share the results for the anyone who's interested. Okay. I think that's the only one people know. It's like the same breakdown too, almost. No, it's, yeah, very close results, 32 people said, Blinding Lights in 19 and 23, so pretty close. Okay, so something else we can do when we're selecting our, never heard of any of these, Scott, go ahead and sing them all. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah, uh, that. I don't know if Scott knows can, them all. <laughs> you can join my Patreon. <laughs> all right, so let's stop sharing that. Okay, so something else to keep in mind when we're talking about soundtrack creation, and that is creating a theme with your music. You know, this is, can be kind of obvious, but that might be sticking to one genre of music or trying to um, use music centered around a event. Obviously in the United States, 4th of July is a big time for fireworks. And a lot of times you, you hear a lot of patriotic music. So a lot of the soundtracks used could be patriotic songs, which kind of creates that theme. Something else we can do is use theatrical music. So obviously movie soundtracks are very theatrical. They have the highs and lows, the tempo changes, and they're also very recognizable. Most people, if I played it, would recognize songs from Star Wars or Indiana Jones or things like that. So they are really good songs to use in um, firework soundtracks. So that is what we're gonna use for our second song here is, uh, I, say, I say theatrical, but they're close. Three song options to use for the body of our show. So if you would please cast your vote for those as well. And I think the idea with theatrical is that most people always assume that during a show that you want to have this very intense, um, and while theatrical can absolutely be intense, but it's okay sometimes to slow it down, have some melody, 
uh, you know, firework soundtracks, I think, are the strongest when you have a lot of contrast and change within that soundtrack. So the more that you can have ups and downs versus, you know, maintaining that same exact theme, theme throughout the entire soundtrack is important. Yeah, it kind of ties into like telling a story where you can build excitement and go from excitement to, you know, a sense of uh, not necessarily sadness, but like the theatrical songs can give you that vibe of like deep thought, right? And then finish strong with a, with a good finale song. So I'm going to go ahead and close that poll. Looks like most people have voted. The winner is Pirates of the Caribbean. I'll share those results for anyone who's interested. Um, and obviously one of the big things with soundtrack creation is you have to keep your audience in mind. If this is your personal show, you can pretty much do whatever song selection you want. You don't even have to follow any of what we talked about today. You can literally choose songs at random. However, in a professional setting, a lot of times you have to keep your audience in mind as far as what the event is, who's going to be there, what the sponsors want for the show. What I mean by that is, you know, if you're doing a country rodeo, you're not going to be using hip hop. Most likely you're probably going to stick to country music or rock music, stuff that fits the genre of people that are there. Right. All righty. So moving on here. where to get music. Now, one thing to keep in mind is quality. And this is why we have this slide in here is we don't want you to rip songs off YouTube, mainly because the quality of those songs is going to widely vary and you're not really sure what you're going to get. So we always recommend getting songs from high quality sources such as Amazon, uh, Google music or Apple music, iTunes. And, and just to note to that, like when you, if you rip a song off of YouTube, it may sound great on your headphones, right? But due to the compression rate being so low, until you start blasting that through a, sound, a large sound system, you may not hear a lot of the distortion that occur, could occur. So while it sounds fine on the surface, until you put it through a sound system, you may not experience any, any trouble. Absolutely. And I forgot to kick off the third poll, which is our finale song. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And like I mentioned before, finishing with something kind of strong. So in this case, we picked some uh, 80s slash 90 rock music. All right, so while the, that poll is running, we'll just go ahead and continue on here. So like I mentioned earlier, a large part of this webinar is gonna focus on the editing aspect of your soundtrack. So it's just a couple things on the editing that we're gonna talk about. For example, adding voiceover. Now you can do this, for example, at the beginning of your soundtrack to do your own custom intro, it kind of adds a nice little flavor to your soundtrack, or obviously you can use it throughout the whole thing like we talked about with the telling a story. We're going to talk about adding silence, for example, a pre-roll at the beginning of your soundtrack, or if you want to add more breaks between songs, you can add silence there, and we'll talk about that. Um, obviously, fading music, so that way you don't have hard cuts, so a song doesn't just abruptly end and go to the next song, so we can actually blend those together. Like I mentioned with pop songs, the ability to cut music down, so that way instead of using four minutes, you're using two minutes of a song. We're going to talk about adding effects. Uh, fade is actually an effect, but then there's other effects you could potentially use for your voiceovers or just if you want to change how the song sounds. And then we're going to talk about changing audio gain so everything is aligned with each other. All right, I'm going to go ahead and end that poll there and share the results. Thunderstruck won by a landslide. So funny enough, all three of these songs were the same songs that were picked in the earlier webinar. So both webinars picked the exact same three songs. And the same landslide on Thunderstruck. Same landslide on Thunderstruck. Obviously. Obviously. All right, so let's finish up the PowerPoint here and pass this over to Scott. Um, and the last thing that we're gonna talk about is formatting and audio box best practices. We're gonna be using Audacity today. Scott's gonna talk more about that. We're gonna show you how to add five seconds of silence. Um, we're gonna talk about kind of the quality of songs. And the last four items here on my PowerPoint are all preset by Audacity, but it is something we mentioned as making sure your soundtrack has. I'm not gonna really talk about these. Scott will probably talk a little bit more about that once it comes to the exporting section. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up the PowerPoint and at this point in time, pass it over to Scott. Excellent, all right, thank you, Joel. All right, let's go ahead and share my screen. And as much as I would love to continue on the drinking game, we are going to change, change direction. So, excellent, all right, so 
I'm going to now begin the actual webinar on audio editing. So one thing to note here is that as we go through this, if you do have any questions, bring them up. I'm going to kind of pause periodically and just ask the moderators if there's any questions that are out there that may be missed. If I missed anything, we can certainly cover at the end within Q&A. And the other thing too is I'm definitely gonna gear this to, uh, if you are an expert audio editor, you may find that some of this uh, you already know. But if you're brand new to editing, I'm really gonna try to slow this down a little bit. So if you've never done this before, uh, by walking through this, uh, hopefully at the end of it, you're gonna have a very good sense of it. So after watching the webinar a couple more times, you're getting some additional assistance from us. You should have no problem going through this process. So we're really gonna go through this from start to finish, all the way from actually purchasing the songs online to loading them into Audacity and to editing that soundtrack creating our final mp3 file and then ultimately loading it into um, a choreography software such as cover show creator excellent so let's let's first start with purchasing of the files so as joel mentioned quality is very critical so while there are obviously different ways of getting mp3s online some of them cost no money we definitely encourage that you purchase online if possible uh, as far as a reliable source such as amazon such as iTunes or uh, Google has additional services as well. And so we're gonna start and actually go ahead and buy a song. Now, I think I already purchased some of these earlier, but the process should just be the same. And it was a uh, blinding light, the weekend, right? So in this case, we're simply gonna go to amazon.com. And what you can do is you can type in the, the name of the song and the artist that you're looking for. And you don't have to go to any special section of Amazon. Typically, it's pretty smart as far as whatever you type in and matching it up to the specific result. And one of the things on Amazon that you'll want to look for is really any section here that talks about buying it on MP3, okay? And so we are going to want to purchase MP3 files. Uh, someone I did see in the chat mention other different audio formats. I do believe that Audacity and other software programs, which we'll get to, support the importing of other formats. But ultimately, if you are wanting to use, for example, our Cobra Show Creator product uh, or our Cobra Audio Box, uh, then MP3 is, is, is really kind of your best bet. So we're gonna go ahead and click on this specific song. And what you'll notice here is in the upper right, it does say, listen now. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go back actually, because I've already purchased this. And we're gonna go back to the Pirates of the Caribbean version, just cause we're gonna need this for the finale song. And I'm gonna buy that here. So because I've already purchased those, it was difficult to show. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on buy song. So if you haven't bought it, it should bring up this option to purchase the song. I'm gonna pay the dollar 29, even though I already spent my lunch money earlier today, I'm gonna to spend a little extra. And once you've done that, it will say to download your music now. So if you click on download your music now, what you'll notice is that in the lower left-hand corner here, if it doesn't already, I'm just gonna try this one more time, here you go. You will see that that audio file has downloaded, so depending on what browser that you're using, that's gonna show a little bit differently. But for me, I'm gonna just click on this little down odor, the arrow, <laughs> click on show in folder, and this will bring me to my downloads folder. And you'll see right here, this is the actual MP3 file that I downloaded. And you'll see here that there's a couple of additional MP3 files that I have downloaded earlier. Now, these files, you can move them around if you wanna put them on your desktop, create a folder, store them anywhere you want on your computer. That's not a problem, these are just simple MP3 files. For me, in the simplicity of this, webinar, I've just kind of kept them all here within my downloads file. So that's the basic process. I'm sure that iTunes and Google work a little bit differently, but this is just one example on how you can purchase a song and obtain that MP3 file directly on, on Amazon. Great, okay, so the next step is, let's go directly into Audacity. Now, it's important to mention that you don't have to use Audacity to do your sound editing. The only reason that we've chosen Audacity is because it is a fairly easy to use program. Uh, it is free, which is great. And it's a bit of a staple within kind of the entry level audio editing market. Uh, if you are using the Cobra Audio Box, uh, we do require that you format it through Audacity one time at the end, which we have within our instructions and we can also help you with. And we may show you that once at the end here, 
we're definitely going to show you how to just do a basic export of your soundtrack. Um, but again, for the purposes of this, we're going to be using Audacity, but you can absolutely use other different audio editing programs if you're more comfortable with them. Now, if you don't have Audacity, all you can do is, uh, is simply go to Google. You can search for it. This website, audacityteam.org, uh, is an option that you can click on. And you'll also notice that there's a, there's a SourceForge link as well. Um, don't use CNET, <laughs> but there's a SourceForge link that's right here that you can download. And uh, we want to make sure that we're downloading this from a reliable source. Otherwise, oftentimes, uh, websites will embed malware and different things that we don't want within those files. But if you do go to this website, it's not a problem and you can basically just download the software. It's available for both Mac and also available for Windows and also Linux if you use that. And so obviously I've already downloaded and installed this software directly on my computer. Great, so the first time, if, you, if, if this is your first time seeing Audacity, uh, you can obviously be a little bit intimidated when you first see it. So there's a lot of buttons, there's a lot of menus, there's a lot of different things that you can do. Don't worry about it. I'm gonna walk us very slowly through the different features of this software. So even though there are a lot of buttons and options, like many software packages, there's really only a smaller percentage of these that you're gonna continually use. So we're gonna to focus today primarily on those, on those features that are important for what we're doing today, which is basic audio editing and soundtrack creation, okay? Now, the first thing that I'll show you here in the upper left is the file menu. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is we wanna import an audio file directly into Audacity. So to do that, we're just gonna click on File, Import, and we're gonna choose Audio. And we're gonna go ahead, and this is bringing me right to the Downloads directory. If you wanted to navigate to a different directory on your computer, wherever you saved your MP3 files, you can do that from this interface. I'm gonna go ahead and select Blinding Lights as the song we had chosen, and I'm gonna click Open. Now when I do this, Audacity is gonna import that file. It's gonna now display that entire sound file in the representation of a waveform right at the top of my screen, okay? And so I'm gonna first give us a little bit of a tour of the different user interface tools that we can use to kind of do our basic navigation. So obviously here within the soundtrack, we have our waveform. Now you'll notice that I'm just moving my mouse kind of left and right across this waveform. You'll actually see that the waveform is kind of duplicated. You'll see a top and a bottom section. What that is, is that's actually the left and the right channel for our stereo soundtrack. So you'll notice it says stereo, this is the left, and this is the right. So when we do all of our editing, even though there are two bars, one for left and one for right, all the actions that we're gonna take are actually gonna affect both of those, right? So if you did wanna do advanced, more advanced stuff, I'm sure you could get into left and right audio editing, but for today, we're just gonna keep it to, to doing both the whole way through. Now, whenever you click on this waveform, if you want, you've got your little play controls in the upper left. So if you want, I can press play. Okay. I can pause it. If I click stop, that's gonna bring me, uh, actually, it'll just stop it, obviously. And then you can click this to bring you to the beginning of the soundtrack, this to bring you to the end. But again, just by putting your cursor over the waveform and clicking will allow you to click on the different areas of the song and interact with it. And we're gonna be obviously doing that a lot here with the next um, you know, 10 or 20 minutes. Now, the next thing is, is that in the upper right here, you'll see these little plus uh, kind of magnifying glass icons, which represent zooming in and zooming out. So wherever you click within the waveform, if you press on this zoom button, you'll notice that every time I click on that button, so I'm clicking now, I'm clicking now, it's actually making that waveform get wider and wider and wider as I'm almost as if I'm getting closer and closer to it, right? And as I'm getting closer to it, if I play that audio, you'll notice that the actual waveform is moving faster than when I was zoomed out, right? And so by zooming in, and this is a little obvious, by zooming in, you'll have a better view of all the different kind of nooks and crannies and peaks and valleys throughout that show, which will give you the ability to very you know, carefully kind of surgically edit the different areas of the song as it makes the most sense, which we'll be getting into once we start cutting things and fading them and, and doing stuff like that. But again, you can zoom in and out using these interface components and depending on your waveform and where it is 
it's going to zoom into wherever your waveform is is in fact selected. Okay. Uh, the other thing at the bottom of the screen, you do have a left and a right horizontal scroll bar. By doing this, this is also going to scroll the waveform on the top, right? So if I am happen to be zoomed into a specific section and I do want to kind of scroll horizontally left and right, that can be easily done with this horizontal, horizontal scroll bar. So furthermore, on the left-hand side here, you'll notice a couple of different things. Uh, you'll see here that we have a left and a right. So this is actually controlling uh, individually for this track how much of the audio is from the left and from the right. By keeping this directly within the center, we're going to obtain both, uh, both right and left audio. Um, if you did move this all the way to the right and you exported this audio, it would actually only have the audio play on the right-hand side, right? So it's kind of like you're making little edits specifically for this section. Uh, in addition, within here, there's also this little plus or minus gain option, right? So, you know, while if you're purchasing these audio files digitally, they should have the proper amount of gain against them. And by gain, we really mean kind of essentially volume, right? It wants to be a full-bodied sound. We don't want it to feel distant or, or quiet. And, you know, in some cases, maybe if your friend gave you an audio file, or let's say someone else did a voiceover for you, or you purchased a voiceover online and you got that audio track and you imported it and you realized, geez, that's just sounding a little bit quiet, you can use this left or right gain control to kind of, uh, you know, basically make that a little bit louder. And what's great is when you're doing that, you can always, again, place your waveform over here, you play it, listen to how it sounds, and kind of through the process of trial and error, get it to your liking. Uh, the other one thing to mention is that when you are importing audio soundtracks, you'll notice here that it says stereo 44 100 hertz. You do want that to, to be 44 100. In some cases, you may see that that's not the case. If you do click on this little drop down right here and you go down to format, excuse me, rate, you can change that accordingly. Okay. Uh, and one other thing to know in Audacity, little trick, you'll actually notice that when I did this, see all this is all grayed out. Uh, it's a little kind of hidden thing. If you're not stopped with an audacity, those options do not become available, right? So you'll notice that after I stopped the audio, all of a sudden that was available. So if you're ever editing and you're like, geez, I can't do something, just kind of make sure that you've, you've got that stop button pressed. I'm not sure why that's the case. All right, any questions so far, Joel and other panelists? Everything going okay? Yeah, if you want a slight... If you want a slight break from talking, I do have another poll that people can answer. Sure. Okay. Go ahead. Just curious what your favorite genre of music is for scripting or for <laughs> fireworks shows. <Hey. laughs> That's a good one. All right. Well, everyone ponder that, that interesting poll and make sure that you give your best answer. Excellent. All right. So again, we kind of covered this over here. Now, let's, before we get into importing multiple tracks, let's actually do some editing. And in fact, we're going to start off with adding silence, right? So one of the things that we like about adding silence to the beginning of the show is that when you actually start your show, it gives you a little bit of time such that if you made a mistake, maybe someone hadn't turned on uh, the, you know, you press start and then someone said, no, 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 don't do this or whatever. You basically got a little bit the time to kind of correct whatever is going on operationally before you immediately start the sounds and then have to stop it. So it's a little bit embarrassing if you have to do that. So having silence in the beginning, sometimes people refer it to as like a pre-roll uh, or whatever you want to call it, it can be helpful. And so that's a great first introduction into using, um, using the silence feature and our waveform here. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and, and zoom in right here. And again, I'm right in the beginning. I'm just gonna put my cursor here. Uh, even if I actually clicked on this, it'll actually bring my cursor right to the beginning. And to add silence, what you're gonna do is you're gonna bring your mouse up to rock and roll. All right, good. All right, didn't realize it was coming to your screen. Yep, I saw that. Sorry. All right, so it's okay. So uh, to generate silence, again, you just simply put your waveform in here, click on the generate menu at the top, and you're gonna notice that there's an option for silence. So if I choose this option, it's now going to ask me, well, how much silence do you want to put in the beginning of the soundtrack or wherever your cursor is? And in this case, it's defaulting this to 10 seconds. I'm just going to go ahead and go with five seconds. And that's a bit of what we recommend for Cobra. We also 
recommend it because of the audio box. If, so if you're using the Cobra audio box, it likes to have a little bit of silence in the beginning, just because when you first start the audio, the audio box can align itself. So you'd hear something like a or something like that, right? And uh, if it's silent, you're not gonna hear that. So that first five seconds gives the ability for the audio box to align. If you don't have the silence, it's no big deal. You may just hear that little bit of a chirp or that little bit of an alignment. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click OK. And by doing that, you'll see that there's now this big horizontal bar of five seconds in silence. Now, if I click on my zoom out, which I'm gonna do right now, you'll notice that by zooming out, you can see that a little bit better. And you'll notice that the, for the first five seconds, I have silence. So you can see I can put my waveform in here. I can play my audio. You're not hearing anything. But if I were to play that here, you obviously hear that come in, right? So that's added this first five seconds of silence. Now, I'm gonna show you another cool feature that I'll reference throughout my editing, and that's the ability to undo or redo certain things, right? So let's say I just added that silence and I said, you know what, I don't like that. I wanna add a little bit less silence or I just don't wanna do it at all. What you can do is on the edit menu at the top, you'll notice that we have the undo option. So here it says undo silence. And you'll also notice that there's a hot key associated to that, right? Control Z. So either I can press and click undo silence, which gets rid of my silence, right? Uh, or I could have pressed control Z on my keyboard. You can also redo specific actions. So if I do redo silence, that's gonna bring the silence right back, right? So what you can see here is, let's say I'm gonna press Control Z right now on my computer, and you'll notice that got rid of it, right? And let's say I felt like adding some silence right here for no specific reason, and I said, you know what, let's add two seconds to silence. All right, you know what, I don't like that. I'm gonna do Control Z, I'm pressing Control Z now, and I wanted to move that over here. Let's generate the silence, it's not noise, let's generate silence right here, and in this case, I actually wanna do one second, I can do that. Maybe I wanna generate some silence here, add another second. So you can see here, I'm very kind of quickly taking action on this waveform, but by pressing Control Z, which I'm gonna do a couple of times right now, one, two, three, that's all backed out, right? Or I can do Control Y, which is redo, and I just did that three times and it brought it back. So using those keyboard shortcuts, it's a very nice and effective way as you're kind of uh, we'll use the term photoshopping your audio file here to quickly go back and forth without having to click on these menu options here. And keep in mind, everything as well, like zoom in and zoom out, those also have hotkeys like control one and control three. So if you're a hotkey person, most of Audacity has that built in and I'm sure that's also available within the, within the help system. So again, we're just gonna go back, let's add our, uh, let's add our five seconds of silence in the beginning of this. Perfect, and the other thing I'm gonna do with an Audacity is I'm also gonna just save my project, right? So I'm gonna save my project, and we'll just call this Cobra Webinar, and I'm gonna hit save. And what's great is that, that that file that I'm creating is a separate Audacity file, so that file is gonna contain all the different tracks, all the different, basically, knobs and dials that I've set according to this, and I can always come back later. So if I didn't finish editing now, I can come back later. And I'd like to periodically do that throughout my soundtrack editing. We have a question, uh, actually, in the chat, Scott. We uh, sure. they want to know what the opposite of left is. Did I say something? Oh, it's right? <laughs> yeah. Did, did I mess it up? No, no. It's uh, the right drinking game, remember? Uh, yeah, OK. <laughs> Continue. It's, a, it's okay. All right, so let's, let's do this here. So I'm gonna zoom out and let's go from silence and let's start actually showing you a couple of different features with regards to cutting out different sections of audio. So we're gonna, let's go ahead and we're just gonna spend about 20 seconds and we're just gonna listen to the beginning of this song. All right, excellent. So now one of the things you can do is by listening to the song from start to finish, you can start getting a sense of what areas of that song are potentially choruses or potentially repeated, okay? And 
So for example, and I'm not going to do the best job of this, but we're going to give this a shot, right? So I'm just going to zoom into a section here. Let's just pick this area right here. So let's say I'm trying to edit this soundtrack down from say, right now we've got about three minutes, three minutes and 15 seconds. Maybe we want to knock a minute or two off of that, right? So what you can do is if you kind of look at the soundtrack, you'll oftentimes you can see visual patterns, right? So you'll see this area right here and this area here actually look quite similar. Now, I'm not sure if these are actually the same, but let's just take a listen. Let's see if they are. All right, so that was that section. Let's listen to this. Aha, so I actually didn't know that those were the same and I did recognize that right now. So what you can do is if you notice those two sections are the same, right, technically you could uh, in some ways kind of edit those together. And let me just zoom back here. I wanna, oops. Just make sure I got those two sections right. Ah, there they are. So what I would do is I'm gonna grab a section here. Now it's important if you're gonna try to cut this out and match these up together, what I'm gonna do is when I'm selecting this, I'm gonna select a little bit late in this section. It's kind of like if you were, this is a bad example, but if you're like cutting a piece of food, like steak, right? And you wanna start by trimming off that fat, you're probably not just gonna cut right into the meat, you're gonna cut you know, into the fat section, but leaving a little bit there because you don't want to cut too much. Same thing here, we're kind of cutting out the audio, but we're not cutting out everything because we know that, that we don't want to overcut it, right? So I'm going to cut this a little bit too late. And then over here, I'm going to probably cut this just a smidgen early, right? And once I've highlighted that section, and, and again, using that undo feature, you can always go back and try again, but I'm gonna go at the top edit window or uh, menu, and I'm gonna choose cut. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and I'm gonna click cut, which also has a control X uh, hotkey. So if I choose cut, you're gonna notice that this whole section is just gonna disappear. And it did, right? So that section just kind of went away and now our audio soundtrack is about two minutes and 15 seconds now that's all and great but i'm sure when i actually play this audio it's probably not going to sound that smooth so what i'm going to do is let's just zoom in so you'll see here where my waveform is this is the section that i was editing i'm going to zoom in on that right and you'll see this is exactly where i combine them so anything to the left of this is what was earlier on and anything to the right of this is later so let's listen to this Right, so you heard that kind of like double play there. Right, and maybe actually that's okay for you, right? But what you can kind of further do is if you want to say, you know what, I'm going to knock out like this section right here, right? You could just go ahead and I'm going to press Control X. That's going to get rid of that. And now let's play it again. Right, and I actually saw that that if I go if I do Control Z, I just realized that that little boy is actually I think here. So let's get rid of it here and let's try that. Or not, and there's no way for me to get rid of that. But <laughs> anyway, so this is me, and and one of the things to mention here is that sometimes getting these things right with your editing, it can take quite some time. It may take me five or ten minutes just to get this you know, exactly the way that I want it, that's important to me, okay? Um, so I'm not gonna get this perfect right now, but hopefully you're kind of seeing the idea here that you can kind of highlight sections. You know, if I wanted to highlight this much further, you can remove that. There we go, that was actually much better. So I kind of took a guess. There we go, so that sounds a lot better right there. Now, if I zoom back out, you'll see that I've got my soundtrack is now condensed down to two minutes and 15 seconds, right? And you can do that as much or as little as you want when you're doing your edits. All right, uh, makes sense so far. Any, any questions, gonna check in with everybody? Any playful comments? Uh, yes, you are saying write a lot. So I think we've lost uh, yes. half our attendees. They're still here, uh, but continue I think we're on, though. that right now. Oh, they're passed out. All right. Well, keep drinking. Right. <laughs> that's my goal. I do. I just did it again. That's my. That's my. Uh, that's my. Uh, it's your go-to it. transition. Thank you. I'm gonna try my best. I'm going to start saying left. <laughs> okay. Right. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs>
All right, so let's, I just did it again. So let's go ahead and import a second audio song. I'm gonna click on the menu, or excuse me, the file menu at the top. We're gonna to click on import, and we're going to bring in the second song, which is the, he's a pirate, and yep. I think it's the second one. I think we're gonna go with this one right here. I think it was the other one. Yeah, that one was from earlier. Yeah. Uh, all right, my mistake. So file, import, audio. And we're gonna grab this one. And this is the more theatrical one, yep. I believe. Yes, that looks much more intense. So when you import a second audio file, today, actually during our earlier webinar, I ended up showing two different methods of this. And what I'm going to do is just explain both of them and I'll try to demonstrate them. Now, what, and, and let me just show you something that's gonna make this make a little bit more sense. So if I click on, any one of these waveforms, right? Because you'll see this obviously brought this in as a second waveform. If I click on these waveforms, you're gonna hear that it's actually playing both of these songs at the exact same time. If I click on Control A, which highlights both of these tracks, and I click on tracks at the top, and I go to align tracks, and I say align end to end, by doing that, it's automatically going to shift that second track to start at the end of the first track. So that's a feature with an audacity, and I'll just do that once more. I'm going to press Control Z. That's going to back off this change. Again, Control Z. And I'm going to do Control A. That's going to highlight everything. Tracks, align tracks, end to end. And that's going to move that track over. Now, you don't have to do that. So what I actually did today within my earlier seminar is I simply muted this first track up here and then I edited this soundtrack as if it was the only soundtrack that was playing, right? Because if you were to go in here and for example, I'll just use my silence option. If I go in here and generate a couple seconds of silence, you notice it's going to add the silence just for this track. It's not going to do it for this top track even though when I played the audio, it was playing both of them. So whatever changes that you do, depending on whichever track that you're focused on, is gonna only make those change for that specific track. So even though we just performed that control A, we clicked on tracks, and we aligned our tracks end to end, you don't have to do that. You can simply mute the different tracks, edit them independently, and then what I'll show you at the end of this webinar is that you can that you can basically cut and paste them back to back. Uh, but since I think this is more of the preferred way, so I'm just gonna control A and we're gonna align them end to end. Since this is more preferred, we're gonna go ahead and use this approach. And what this also allows you to do is by having these as independent tracks, it also allows you to independently control each of these gain adjustments, right? So if this one was a little quieter or this one was a little quieter, you could make those adjustments and those would be remembered. And again, as you make any of those changes, feel free to save that project and those will be remembered if you want to get up and come back and start editing later. Great, so let's go into our Pirates of the Caribbean song here. So let's zoom in and forward here and let's just zoom in again and we'll zoom in a little bit more. Let's just rewind this back. Here we go. So let's listen to this come in here. All right, excellent. So, excellent. All right, so let's do this. Let's take a little bit of a change and why don't we talk a little bit about voiceovers? Sound good? All right, because the uh, the soundtrack for Pirates of the Caribbean, it's actually pretty good. It's like a minute and 45 seconds. There's not much to do there. So let's say you wanted to add a bit of a voiceover in here. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to collapse these tracks up here. And that's one little cool feature you can also do. You can expand and collapse these tracks just to give us a little bit more room, right? So I'm just going to mute this one, collapse it. I'm just going to mute this one. I'm going to collapse it. And now I'm going to click on tracks at the top and I'm going to click on add new. And let's just go ahead and add a stereo track. And what this is gonna do is it's going to 
uh, place a brand new track within our Audacity window. And you'll notice that at the top of the screen, there's this record button. So if you did want to record your own voiceovers, you can absolutely do it. Uh, I would probably recommend a nice mic or make sure that you test this so that, that you have a good sound quality behind it. But within any area of your soundtracks, you can still see these waveforms. You can choose to record audio. So if I wanted to have something, for example, in between my Pirates of the Caribbean and this other song, you could do that. Uh, or you can have it kind of occur within the entry or the intro way. And I did an absolutely voice, horrible voiceover earlier today, so I'm going to try to equally match how terrible that was. So here we go. Introducing Pirates of the Caribbean. All right, and I'm sure every single person on this webinar would have something more creative and interesting to do other than that. But for the purpose of this, I just want to show how this is working. So I went ahead and I recorded a little bit of a voiceover. And now let's just hear that play together with Pirates of the Caribbean. Oops. Try this again. Hit play. Introducing Pirates of the Caribbean. All right, so that obviously sounds terrible, but maybe if I wanted to make myself a little bit louder here, hopefully this will make me sound a little bit louder. All right. Introducing Pirates of the Caribbean. Right, so you saw how I adjusted the gain, and that actually. <laughs> All right, thank you, Joel. I'll be interested to see those results. All right, so that was an inter interesting voiceover. And again, uh, uh, if you do use websites like Voices.com, I think is a great one. You'd be surprised how much li how little you can spend to get professional voices versus mine. Do do cool things like this and and bring them into your soundtrack. Now, the other cool thing too is if you're like, you know what, I don't really like the location of this. So I want to move this a little bit earlier or later. You can also simply highlight sections of audio, right? You can, I just heard myself say right again, you can cut them and then anywhere within your soundtracks, you can paste them. So let's say you wanted to put this, for example, here, you could paste that over there. Or if I did control Z to back it out, let's say I wanted to have that display here, I could do that here. So you'll notice that it's very easy to simply cut and paste different sections of your uh, voiceover. And the other cool thing is I'm going to show you a little bit about effects. And this is more just kind of a fun tool. But if you highlight any part of your audio, whether it's here, or if I wanted to highlight audio up here, it doesn't really matter wherever it is, you can highlight the audio. And effects are kind of like filters for Photoshop. It allows you to do cool and fun things. Just <laughs> That's good. Brian probably does have the best voice. All right. All right. So if I, if I click on the effects up here, you can choose cool things. So let's say I wanted to make myself sound really cool and I want to put in an echo. So I choose echo. It gives me some options. I don't know what this is going to do, but through trial and error, you could change these values, back them up, see what you like better. But I'm just going to add a little bit of an echo and now I'm going to replay that. All right. Introducing Pirates Introducing of the Pirates Caribbean. Of the right, so that was obviously quite amateur that I did there, but you could do all kinds of fun things like that. If you wanted to reverse your audio, you could, you know, all kinds of fun, weird things. Make yourself sound like a phaser, Wawa. I have no idea what any of these kind of do, but they're just, they're fun. Introducing. Yeah, so obviously you wouldn't want to do that. So effects are a great way, again, for doing kind of fun things to your audio. And uh, the other thing that also is included within effects, which I can probably cover, I can probably cover that within here. It's a little bit better when you're doing audio editing, but let me just show you this right here. So let's go into Pirates of the Caribbean and, and I'm gonna show you actually an example of a bad cut and then we're gonna use fading to show how you can minimize that. So let's, Let's imagine that I did a cut here. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to randomly cut this section of audio out of the soundtrack. So I'm just going to do control X and that's going to get rid of that. And now I'm going to play this and let's sound what this, let's hear what that sounds like. Okay, so that actually didn't sound that terrible. I'll just kind of cut it out of here. This will be a little bit better. Yeah, let's see this here. Right, well, maybe not the worst. So, 
Point is, I'm just going to show you how to do fading. So in some cases, let's say you got your audio track from someone and it sounded like this. And it just cuts out, right? That's no fun if you have something like that. Just it's playing. And it cuts out. So in order to create fades, you can have both fades in and fades out. So if I go ahead and I highlight this section right here and I go to generate, excuse me, effect, and I choose fade out, you'll notice that what it does is kind of create like a linear slope coming down right like this. So now if I replay this, it fades out a lot more cleaner than it did before, which was a hard drop. And you can do this over whatever distance that you want. So if I wanted to do this over a slightly larger distance, you can do that. If you want to go in and re-highlight another section of the fade and make that come down a little bit differently, you can do that as well. And you can essentially keep doing that over and over and over to whatever degree that you want to create the best sound. Right, and that sounds a lot cleaner. That's what you'd expect to hear within a soundtrack versus this kind of abrupt cutout. And the same thing also applies to fading in. So for example, you know, if my soundtrack kind of started, I'm just gonna cut this by putting control X. I'm just gonna mute this down here. Let's play this. If your audio just came in like that, that doesn't sound great. But if you go ahead and highlight this beginning section, go to effect, go to fade in. Now, if I play it, you know, it came in still a little bit there, but if I, again, if I could fade this one more time, Right, that comes in a lot nicer. And again, I can control Z and I can back out all those changes. So fading in and fading out is a very useful tool and it can also be used within transitions as you're trying to manipulate that. So I definitely encourage you practicing with, the, with those different types of controls. Great, so we talked a little bit about voiceover, silence, we talked about fading, cutting songs, we talked about effects, we talked about audio gain. Let's go ahead and let's bring in our third soundtrack. So I'm going to Click on a file, import, audio. Let's bring in Thunderstruck. And by doing this, it's gonna import it and bring it right into, right into the bottom here. And let's go ahead and try that feature where we put everything back to back. I'm curious how that's gonna look. So if I do a control A, tracks, align tracks, end to end, you'll see that what it did is actually align all of my tracks very conveniently end to end, right? And it's gonna order them based on the sequence that they're displaying on the screen. So this is my first, second, third, and fourth. And let's go ahead and we'll just minimize these up so I can just see my thunderstruck. And there we go. So for everybody here, play a little thunderstruck. This is a time to drink, I guess. All right, a little Thunderstruck for you. Now, same thing with Thunderstruck, if we wanted to edit this, and again, I'm not quite sure what I'm looking at, but if I wanted to just grab a whole entire section here because I can see a space, and I'm gonna highlight this, let's just completely cut that out, right? Zoom in a little bit. You can see this is the area that I cut, and let's listen to it. Right, you can see that kind of was a little bit choppy within that transition. I'll do it again. And what you could easily do is, again, you can use different techniques where maybe I add a little bit of a fade out right in here, and then maybe within this section here, I add a little bit of a fade in, and maybe that will soften this a bit. Right, and so just with a very amateur move right there, using fade in and fade out, I made that less abrupt and less awkward, and it felt like it was a little bit more natural within that song. 
Perfect. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and save my project right now. And any, any questions, comments, Joel, before I go to the last stuff, which is exporting your audio soundtrack? I think we've answered all the questions thus far. Okay, great. So the last and final step uh, is to export your audio soundtrack. So it's actually quite simple to do. You're going to click on the file menu, go to export. We're going to choose to export as MP3. Now, keep in mind, if you had imported other audio files, and I'm just really curious now that we're talking about this, so you can see that you can import a variety of different files that are within here, maybe not all of them, but no matter how you imported them, you can export them directly as an MP3 file. So we'll choose MP3 as our export option. And for example, if you're using the audio box, you'd want to name this audio box within the file name. And you'll see here that it defaults to MP3. And these are the options that Joel was showing at the end of this PowerPoint presentation. And these typically will de default within Audacity. But you do just want to make sure, and these are within our instructions, that you have constant 320 KBS and joint stereo. So again, these should default, so this isn't anything too complicated to do, but just simply when you're exporting, you make sure that these are set. And then you can go ahead and click Save. And what this is gonna do is this is going to uh, create my MP3 file. And so what I'm gonna do in the meantime, just for fun, is let's just go to cobrashowcreator.com and we'll just let this load while, while Audacity is still exporting because it, it can take a little bit of time for Audacity to, to export. Uh, one thing to note that I actually didn't mention within my last webinar that I just realized now, if you've installed Audacity for the first time, when you try to export the MP3 file, it may ask for what's called a lame encoder. That's L-A-M-E. If you're watching this though, we'll also put the link within the description below and you can access it. It's just a simple file that you download off of our website. It's a program that you install. Once you install it, it's not like there's an icon on your desktop or anything. It just installs it. And next time you try to use Audacity to export, you don't get that error. Right, and so that's and that's also within our, our audio box instructions. Great, I have exported in my MP3 file. If I just minimize my windows, you'll see that that audio file is located right here on my desktop. And if I go into Cobra Show Creator, now keep in mind we're not going to script today, but I just want to show you this. If I click on, uh, oops, sorry, new show, and we'll just call this Cobra Webinar and I'll click Create Show. It's gonna ask me to choose an audio file if I want one. I'm just gonna say Add New. Choose a file off my computer. And let's go right into my desktop. Choose my audio file, and I'm gonna to choose to click Upload. So this is Show Creator uploading the audio file that I just created from Audacity. Excellent. And once you import that audio file, it saves that, actually saves it on the cloud. So no matter what computer you log into, you'll see that. And if I go ahead and choose that audio file, my waveform is going to import that into my show. And you'll see right here, this is our show. It's ready to go. So that waveform that we've just created is now available directly within Cobra Show Creator and you can start editing, which we'll be doing within our next seminar. Great, so that, that was pretty much <laughs> sort of most of the things I was trying to cover. Uh, so, Scott, do you, you have, have any, any questions that, that people have? Do you have iTunes on your computer? And do you own any music that you can show how to get from iTunes into Audacity? Uh, I don't have iTunes on my computer, but that's a great question. And that's something that we could certainly cover at a different point unless anyone else. Joel, do you have iTunes on your computer and control that? I am not a Apple person, sorry. Right, okay, maybe Zach, maybe somebody else. If not, we apologize for that. I do believe that I'm sure if the, you just Google, you know, MP3 from iTunes, if you just Google this process, uh, I'm sure that there's a, hopefully a simple way to do that through Apple support but I, I'm sure that I you click on, like if you, if you're on a Mac and you click on 
your finder and then go to applications and then right click on iTunes and you uh, view package content from within that folder uh, tree, you can see your downloaded songs, but they have to be purchase music. They can't be Apple music downloads. Got it. Uh, but that's great feedback. I think next time we, we certainly could have brought up more than just Amazon and we could have done some, done some other sources. All right, any other questions, Joel, or any of the panelists? So off camera, we will be going through and editing this audio track further, and that's the track we'll be using next week. It's not like we're going to yeah. use exactly what we have here today. Just we'll Yeah. We do um, have one uh, that says, is Audiobox required to utilize Cobra Show Creator and Audacity? Uh, Zach, you expressed the, or do you want me to just answer that, or you just click the button? I assume. I just clicked the play. You can answer that for sure. Okay, that's fine. So uh, the audio box is not required to use Cobra Show Creator and Audacity. So if you do, if you want to do a pyro musical and you do not own the Cobra audio box, it's not a problem at all. The audio box is really just a, a tool for you to have that music perfectly synchronized. So you can purchase your audio files, create your soundtrack load it into Cobra Show Creator, load that script file into your 18R2. The only difference uh, in this uh, that you have to do is when you start your show, you could use, for example, the 321 countdown, right? So if you have a computer or some other device that's going into your sound system, just simply press the button to start your show on, uh, on, your, on your 18R2, press the button to start the audio on your, on your sound system, um, and also within 5.1, and not to get into the future, but we also have SMPTE timecode input support. That's more of a professional feature, but that's another way to run audio without using an audio box through a timecode feed input, which we'll definitely be covering within a whole other webinar, not within this one, but that is available. Bo had actually asked a question about SMPTE timecode or many tracks to use with SMPTE. Do we sure. So I, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so when so we're, we are very close, and I know that uh, we sound like a broken record with that, but uh, very possibly within the coming weeks here, we're gonna have our uh, Cobra uh, 5.1 release, which will be including some cool new features. So, and we'll be discussing SMPTE at that point. But Bo, if you have any questions about that, we can certainly help you offline. So there was one comment just about iTunes music format. It's uh, AAC, it's not MP3, so you just have to go and get a conversion software from M sorry from AAC to MP3, and then you can use it. Okay, you said that was AAC. Yeah, it can. It, they're downloaded in a AAC. Okay. And somebody else asked if you need to have the name Audio Box for your uh, your audio file, and the answer you, is not yeah, 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 correct. Yeah, on four point or higher. Uh, you don't, but it has to match up with the audio file name within the uh, script. I will tell you that in the next release, the entire matching of audio file names to scripts and you, the naming of files, uh, the restrictions on that has effectively gone away. Okay, so you'll, I think people will be very happy with, with how it works within this next release. So, and it does look like if you just go online, there's different AAC to MP3 converters. And again, if anyone wants help with this, we are happy to help beyond just kind of the, you know, we're not going to help you clean your house, but we will absolutely help you with things that are separate, uh, you know, a little bit outside of Cobra, things like this, helping you convert stuff if needed. A really good question. Which one, Rick White or the Christine? Christine. Uh, Christine, uh, one of the questions here about projecting sound to an audience, and it was suggested it be done in mono, but the show, but the demo showed the format saved as audio. Can it be saved as forced mono? Yes. So you can absolutely, I believe that when you, right, so that's a great question. So when I exported this, uh, I did choose joint stereo. Uh, I do believe you can force ex export this to mono. I do not think that's, that's going to have any impact uh, really the only thing that the Cobra audio box has an issue with is this bit rate mode, right? The minute this becomes variable or any other setting, it's not going to be able to properly calculate it where it currently aligns within the time. And that's when you 
people complain about it skipping around, right? It's because constant was not selected. The quality is more or less quality. The channel mode, joint stereo, stereo, or force export to mono. I do not believe that you would have any problem if you exported this to mono. That's not a requirement. You can certainly do that, especially with stereo soundtracks that, that you've got big sound systems that are spread over long distances where you want everyone to experience all of the sounds on both channels, left and right. It's a good question. Uh, with the audio box, I thought I saw somewhere that you guys may be trying to create something where people watching your show can hear your music through an Android or a certain program. Not sure if that's true. Uh, yes, we've talked about that on Facebook a bit. Um, absolutely, that is something that we're working on. I don't have time frame or date on that, but I can assure you that that is something that will come out. All right. Uh, with new batteries, what's the average time of an audio box can play? Uh, about an hour, it's awful. It, it's a battery eating machine. And we have a LiPo kit that we are close to releasing, which is going to dramatically improve that on a, on a by, by many fold <laughs> that I think people will be very happy with. Uh, Non-related question tonight's audio class, but there's plans to have iPads or iPhones, as I believe is a control desk. Uh, yeah, well, we can definitely talk about that within the control panel webinar. So um, the short answer is probably not. We're going to probably be sticking with Android, unfortunately, just due to the development time to support both of those. Um, but, but absolutely, when we get into the control panel seminar, we can cover a lot of those in more detail. Okay. What did um, ask about copyrights? I don't know if you want to talk about that like we did earlier. Uh, Chris, did you? Are you best? Chris, can you answer that a little bit better? Uh, well, when I talked to Jesse, he basically said if it's a, a public event, um, you would have to consider licensing for your music. If it's a private event, um, it's uh, not as he didn't go so far as to say it's not required, but it's not uh, looked upon uh, if it's a private like backyard event versus doing a, a community event where the the general public's open licensing would have to be paid the appropriate uh, ASCAP or BMI. Right. Okay. So someone asked about um, FM transmitter. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. People. Yeah. Yeah, any of the outputs on the audio box, if you had an FM transmitter plug into the audio box, it'll, it'll transmit. I actually did that a few weeks ago. Short, short range transmitter, but. Um, Mark, with the audio box life kit, will there be issues if the balance text lark has been installed? Uh, are you getting studying space? Nope. We are making sure that the, and we're also gonna have an upgrade kit for your existing audio box. And everything will fit, even if it's tight. I got it. All right. <laughs> Just, thank you, David. <laughs> I was typing. All right. Okay. So, excellent. Well, thank you guys. Thank everyone for attending. We're going to probably hang out here as we've done in the last webinars for a good five or 10 minutes. So, if, um, if you guys want to hang out and just chit chat or have any other questions or want to see us kind of joke around for a few minutes, that's fine. Um, if not, I want to thank everyone so much for attending this webinar. Hopefully you guys found this valuable. Uh, I'm sure we're going to be sending out an email and asking for feedback for this. So definitely uh, we want to hear the good with the bad or the bad with the good. Let's put it that way. And just because we want to improve. So thank you guys so much. And again, if you have any questions also outside of this, email us at helpycoverfiringsystems.com. We've got live chat on the website. Uh, and also you can call us directly and um, if you if if you want to contact us directly if you have our email address that's that's great if not you can go through help and Zach will put you in contact with any of us directly if that's needed <laughs>